Hi, I'm Dr. Nadine Wong. Would you like to know the expression of a man? Well, join me on the Now Talk Show. The Now Talk Show is an intimate conversation with men to highlight the pivotal awakening experience that has brought him from trials into triumph into the now. The Now Talk Show will be sponsored by the Alabaster Wellness Clinic. Please stay tuned. Good evening, good morning, depending on where you are joining us. Thank you for joining us on the Now Talk Show. I'm super excited once again. We have two distinguished gentlemen joining us. Uh, you heard the story last week that there are 10 distinguished gentlemen that got together and wrote a book titled The New, The, the New You, or The New, The New, The New. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's the name of it, but they're going to tell you. I'm super excited because we have two of the uh, the authors that are here to share their part in collaborating this awesome book. We're going to help me to welcome uh, Dr. Joseph Akwe and Danami Daniels to the Now Talk Show. Gentlemen, super excited. I can hardly speak. (laughs) <laughs> I can hardly speak. Last week we had an awesome time. And now today I know you guys are going to take it to another level. So without further ado, the fact that it's two of you with two different minds coming together to produce, to be a part of this collaborative great book. Without further ado, please, I don't know who is going to start, but <laughs> the question is, Tell us, let's start with Dr. Akwe. Tell us a bit about who you are and where you're from. Give us a little bit about your, your upbringing. Yeah, well, first of all, it's a pleasure to be on the show with you um, and Jelani. And uh, me, I'm actually originally born and raised in Toronto, Ontario. I grew up in Rexdale. Uh, my parents right. were immigrants from Ghana. And um, it was me and my uh, two younger sisters and my older half sister uh, growing mm-hmm. up in, in that that area. And uh, you know uh, that area was good; it had its strengths. You had a great uh, immigrant population. You had a lot of people you could relate to, but it also had its pitfalls, as as people know. And you know, I found myself in trouble and and things like that. And my mom made every effort to try to keep me out of trouble. You know, it's not always going to be successful. Uh, but for me, uh, I think it, life has been a journey in the pitfalls, but also the peaks. And uh, I went through many trials and tribulations, but also many successes. And, you know, not to get into a long-winded biography, but, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, went to high school in Toronto as well. Uh, ended up graduating as a top male student, uh, athlete of the year in Nevada, Victorian, and made my wow. way. University of Toronto on a scholarship and uh, went through my ups and downs there, but finished there and ended up in medical school in the United States. And I'm currently at the University of Minnesota completing my residency in urology, which is surgery of the GU tract. And uh, I'm here with my wife and my two kids. One is a two and a half year old and one is a three month old, Josiah and Naraya. Uh, wow. My name is Precious. So, uh, wow. <laughs> life has brought us to this point. And, you know, I think that's just, um, I'm just fortunate to be here and have the opportunity to talk about that with you guys. Awesome. Mr. Daniel. Yes. Wow. After hearing that, I don't know what to say. <laughs> no, we, we just, we just, just I know, bring I your truth. The reason why we reason why we did the book was because we all have different paths that's right so that so that and then we could show each 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 one has a different path it's not one path so that's my right. path is um i'm from i'm originally from st kitts nevis okay. i came to canada i don't know when i was 12 and i did live between canada and queens toronto and queens and i lived more in the west the west end and that, mm-hmm. that was interesting time um my introduction to the book was by Jeff and mm-hmm. um, he put us all together and that's the ma- that's that's the main part was he was able to put the 10 of us together mm-hmm. and as you could see and I will add on to it the difference in, in the difference with 
all of our stories is what makes it a story. So it's it gives right. someone the ability to take whatever direction or whatever they've gone through. Hopefully we connect with them and mm -hmm. uh, we could show them that there's a way, there's a way out, there's a way up and out. Mm -hmm. And just to add to my story, more or less, my story was um, uh, in my teenage years, I lost my friend through, uh, okay. I seen his, um, it was a very a challenging time in my life. I seen, I seen his death on Channel 7. So okay. I, I realized he was murdered when I seen his shoes on TV in the morning. How old were you at that time? I was 18. Okay. Yeah, so I seen the shoes and um, it was it was it was it was quite a challenge because I, I was the weight was in at that time was to do something about it mm -hmm. um, for the murder. And mm -hmm. that, that was a, a big part of my life being in the middle of a situation where you're you're being questioned then the pressure of retaliation. And I just wanted to share with the story. A part of it was that you could go through these challenges and I could go into it deeper, which I will, but mm -hmm. more or less you could you could hit the crossroads and you could, with the help of family and the help of guidance, you could get through it. Okay. Yeah. Good support group is always important. So Dr. Akwe, I read your bio and wow, it's it's so saturated with with excellence. There <laughs> is you. there is an area though that I'm gonna ask you to bring light to about your school year. It says that you had a little bit of a difficulty in terms of uh, your academic. Is it adjustment? Was it difficulty in terms of um, uh, learning or difficulty in adjusting in terms of group friendship and so on. Can you shed some light to that? Yeah, so when I went to high school, uh, my mom had purposely made sure I went to a high school that didn't include a lot of my friends with elementary school. Um, oh. Typically, when we got in trouble, we got in trouble together. Uh, mm -hmm. So her strategy was uh, separate them and uh, maybe that would be you know, an effective way to curtail those kind of attitudes. Um, and I think, you know, it may have had the opposite effect because now you get to high school and your goal is to try to fit in and uh, you're trying to figure out what group am I going to fit in? What do I need to do to fit in with particular people? You know, what kind of reputation do I have to develop? Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, for me, you know, I said, well, you know, the people who get the most attention, the people who, you know, uh, get the girls and, 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 and <laughs> got the nice shoes and all of that those are the people who are finding ways to you know make money to do certain things uh, mm -hmm. that obviously are not always within the the uh, purview of the law um so for me that was the thing because i think uh, you know, i was a relatively good student but being a good student didn't necessarily coincide with being a popular person or being somebody who got it, who got the attention and i think i kind of you know um, made every effort to to fit in at the detriment of my education and at the mm -hmm. detriment of the potential I had. So, you know, those, that was a big, that was a difficulty. I think obviously there's always educational adjustments and, you know, I may have failed a class or two, but uh, a lot of it was just lack of effort. Uh, right. That was a big, big part of it. So what was the pivotal point <clears throat> when you awaken, uh, an awakening came about in terms of I need to focus on my studies here. <laughs> yeah, there were a couple of things. So I would <laughs> say uh, one of them was uh, one of the cousins I had who I really looked up to as kind of a role model. He was mm -hmm. cool. He you know, had all the things. He ended up getting shot and paralyzed and weighed down. And it was a stark reminder of what the potential uh, implications of this life is. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of times you don't see that side of things. Right. The second thing was, you know, coming, kind of reconnecting my faith a little bit more, um, you know, through, I had friends uh, who were very close with growing up and, and you know, they, they had, I, I met them many years later and, you know, they were on this super positive trajectory and, you know, now of course they spoke to me about a catalyst for them, which was their faith. And mm -hmm. uh, recognizing that was another thing that kind of helped start, uh, you know, develop a better sense of identity. Mm -hmm. um, 
And finally, at the University of Toronto, they had a program called the Summer Venture Program, uh, it was by, uh, founded by a couple of uh, people who wanted to increase the representation of uh, Caribbean Canadians, African Canadians, mm -hmm. uh, Black Canadians, and uh, Aboriginal people in professional fields like medicine, for example. So I had the opportunity to participate in that program. And at that program, I met like-minded people. I met mm -hmm. one of my mentors, Dr. Kerr. I met uh, Anna Ali, who has been more of like a mother in this academic journey. And it was those people who have been catalysts in my life up to this day. So mm -hmm. I can't credit one single thing, but I think it's the collective. And I have to give my mom some credit too. She did make me work in the factory one summer. And after okay. I worked in the factory, I said, man, I cannot do this. Uh, wow. Because it is tough. I could, I could barely make it through a shift. So, you know, like I said, there's a lot of things that came together to Mm -hmm. Stereo on because it's you take multiple turns off the right the right path, so you need multiple pushes back onto the right path. Wow! Listen, please, mothers, it, all the all the mothers out there, you know, listen, we salute you. You do what you need to do to get your child, your son, on the right track. We really salute to you. So, uh, Doctor uh, Doctor Daniels, I'm prophetic, you know, Doctor Daniels. <laughs> Well, I, I, I'm a doctor in some manners, but not not the yeah. same as yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. But I'm a social I'm a social doctor. That's fine. That's fine. There are all sorts of PhDs out there. That's perfectly fine. So, Mr. Daniel, share with us your pivotal awakening moment. You talk about your friend. You saw them on the television and know that they they died. They were shot. So, give us that pivotal awakening after you saw that experience. What happened next? Um, I it did not awake me. It was more of, of a challenge at that time. Okay. It was a it was a lot of weight. I felt a lot of weight on my shoulders. Um, mm -hmm. Meaning, uh, when you when you're growing up, you have a community, and you you tend to be unaware that there's a world outside of the people mm -hmm. that you know, outside mm -hmm. of the relationships you know. So mm -hmm. I was feeling the pressure of having to retaliate on that situation. And mm -hmm. my hardest part was that um, at that time, I I was, it wasn't whether, uh, it the pressure was knowing that I was capable of doing something. Okay. So a lot of people in their lives, they speak of things and mm -hmm. they say that they're in a challenge, but in actuality, they're not in the mindset to do something about it. So mm -hmm. what, what the pressure I was incurring was knowing that I know that if I'm not a gangster or anything like that, but mm -hmm. I do have a personality. If I, if I decide to set myself on something, mm -hmm. I, I might make an attempt. And so that was my challenge. That was a big challenge. And it because it brought my self esteem down, because you know your friends would be looking at you a certain way. So there was a bunch of mm -hmm. emotional turmoil, like why, how come? And as I got older, I realized that they were just it would just I would have just been another report on CTTV or right. something like that. So mm -hmm. my feelings at that time was not it was real, but the end result would not have been to my benefit. So, and I thank my mother. My mother constantly reminded me that um, my life is important. And, mm -hmm. you know, she kept, she kept beating it into my brain that um, do not do anything. And it, it was over time that I was able to realize that that was not the good path to go. And, um, and my life continued. Um, and I didn't get, I, I wouldn't even call it an awakening. It it did not happen for a long time. So I just mm -hmm. I'm an I'm an entrepreneur. So I make my living through businesses. I've mm -hmm. done auto sales. I'm into mm -hmm. auto finance. I wrote other books. So right. that's how I made my living. But mm -hmm. my turning point, I guess, when I had my awakening, was 2015. Mm -hmm. um, I used to write quotes and I would share them on Facebook. And right. I wanted to. I wanted to share my story and create my own story that is not dependent on being 
hired or being, I wanted to control my own destiny. Mm -hmm. So I'm not dependent on others to give me a chance. That's right. So that's that that was the opening for me. 2015, when I wrote my first book, which was Forward March. And at that mm -hmm. time, I was just tired of being cornered. I was tired of like second, being second. And I wanted to be number one. And right. uh, this is the journey that I am to be number one in regards to my quotes. Mm -hmm. uh, I find that I think I'm the best quote writer in the world, living quote writer. And I want to make sure that is conveyed. And the idea for that is just to show our friends and associates that we could we could be the we could create our own story. We're not we don't have to wait for anyone to to give us a story. Wow, that that is powerful. His stories, it, you break it's two compound words. His story, and it's important that you know you you own your history and you write it. You make it happen. Wow. Well, listen. Without further ado, gentlemen, let's get right into the book. And I understand that each person brought a personality to the book. So, Dr. Quay, tell us about your involvement, your contribution to the book. And tell us about, without giving too much about the book, but, you know, just really, uh, I guess, whet your appetite enough to get the book. Okay, well, of course, the book, as we will highlight here. That's mm -hmm. right. right. <laughs> I still haven't gotten my copy, you know. I would have liked to, you know, show the book as well. So Yes, there we go. We got it the right way this There week. you go. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so my involvement of the book was uh, triggered by Jeff Martin. And I knew Jeff Martin indirectly through my mentor, Dr. Kerr, who I had mentioned earlier. Uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Kerr was actually featured in Jeff Martin's uh, children's book. Uh, brothers and sisters from the six, and uh, he wanted to feature both Dr. Kerr and another doctor. So Dr. Kerr referred him to me. I was featured in that children's book as well, and he essentially said, "You know, you've got a really good story, and I'm working on this next project. Would you like to be involved?" And at the time, I'm in the middle of my residency, so I know it's going to be yes. a huge time commitment. But mm -hmm. I just said, you know, and I told him, "Like, listen, I'm not going to be able to be at meetings, and I don't even live in Toronto right now." Mm -hmm. um, I'm busy and I may not be very responsive, but he said, you know what, we're still going to make it work somehow. And uh, somehow, you know, he bared, he bared with all of us. He was able to, to compile a collection of authors. People came and people went, but he stayed the course and it became this project that came to fruition. So my purpose was to kind of go through my story and he wanted all of us to have some type of overarching theme. And for me, my theme was uh, success in the midst of perseverance. And, you know, mm -hmm. I kind of talked about a lot of the struggles that I had went through, you know, uh, kind of growing up with losses in the family. I lost, uh, fortunately, I lost my older sister, uh, lost my grandma, and most recently, unfortunately, I lost my mom uh, as a consequence of the COVID epidemic. And oh, my condolences. Thank you. And it was it, it it was kind of going through those experiences, you know, the successes. Like for example, I graduated. I got all those accolades and then I came to my first year of university and I found myself failing because I was having trouble adjusting to the pace of things and, and, and then having to work part time and and uh, you know, that was life that was life. You know, when I got into medical school I didn't have anybody who was able to co sign a loan and I almost was I almost had to drop out because I just couldn't come up with the money. And these are just some examples, but the idea is that every lesson is 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 meant to refine you for that final destination. Um, mm -hmm. It's meant to prepare you for the challenges you'll face because every higher level you reach, you've got to be ready for new challenges. Yes. You know, whether it was undergrad, med school, undergrad has its challenges, medical school has its challenges, residency has its challenges. I'm sure once I start working, that'll have its challenges. So everything that I went through, good and bad, is refining me for that next level. And that's mm -hmm. the, the general theme that I want to convey in my book, my mind mm -hmm. chapter. Wow. Okay. All right. And Mr. Daniel, please. Yeah. Um, Jeff, I always mention his name over and over because just from him putting this book together, it was unbelievable. And I'll keep repeating it. Uh, when he asked me to share my story, which a person could, when they read the book, they'll get more into it. 
this is not the full platform to give the full story, but mm -hmm. he asked us to, when I first gave him the first, my first part, he's like, Jelani, this is good, but you have to give us more. You have mm -hmm. to dig in deeper. And I remember sharing with my wife that I don't know what this gentleman wants from me. I'm giving him everything. I don't know what he wants. I, I was like, who does he think he is? Like, <laughs> and and I'm so happy. I'm so happy that he made me dig into deep because this story that I share, I never shared the story before for 20 mm -hmm. plus years. I mm -hmm. never, I never wanted to share it. And I never, and he pulled it out of me and and more or less. And just from him, it just it just changed my whole it, it it's been such a great feeling for my life and a great to be a part of this. It's it's been beautiful and and also too it helps with the storyline in which I convey, which the mm -hmm. storyline is we could make our own path because I'm in the book, not because of education, not because of entrepreneurship, is because of my community work of right. I cheer people on. That's one of Anyone could say anything about me, but you cannot say that Jelani doesn't cheer people on through quotes, through regular right. phone calls. And I got involved with the book from what I've done for people. So not, mm -hmm. not because of a particular accolade, just from my own personality. So I just, I just love the book. I love the, the whole meaning of it and showing that we're so powerful as a unit and not as individuals. Wow. So I know gentlemen you're both married what influence if any did your wife play in supporting you to write this book or your chapter in the book well uh, at least for me you know we talk about i mentioned the fact that you know the book in my chapter highlights the the peaks and the values of my journey thus far and uh the people with you who are there during the peaks, or sorry, rather, rather during the valleys are the ones that you really highlight, the ones that you really remember, because everybody can be with you when you're at the top, when you're at the top of your game, yes. going well. And my wife has always been there during those uh, valleys. Uh, she has supported me through those times. So when I write about those, the implication is always that she was there helping and contributing. And, you know, she's not somebody who's asking for all the accolades and asking for all the attention, but even when I was interviewing for a residency, which is the next step after medical school, I didn't have any money left. It was my final year. And she is the one who said, look, you need to fight here with my car. Go, go there, go there, do what you need to do. You know, take the bus, here's something for a hotel room. You know, mm -hmm. and this was at her personal expense. I didn't ask, we weren't even married yet, but it was, it was, uh, it was insurance and it was, it was something that I, I that only people who are, really committed to you can, can do. And I think that mm -hmm. it was a testament to, to who she was. And of course, at that time, I knew I was going to marry her. I was just trying to finish medical school. You better. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, it was just a reminder of the partnership that we had then, which continues to carry on to this day. Because mm -hmm. raising kids and doing residency and, and going through the ups and downs of life requires a very good partner. Uh, so. Mm -hmm the preview for what will come. And so far, it's just as advertised. Wow. Oh, wow. I, there, there's more I'm going to ask you, but let, let's let's move on to uh, Mr. Daniel. Yes. Um, my my wife has been helpful to me through for the <laughs> longest period of our, our lives because um, being a, just to break it down, being an entrepreneur, Mm -hmm. and just anyone who knows that the real meaning of that term means that you are looking for resources outside of the norm. Mm -hmm. And when I say outside of the norm, because you're independent, you're not backed by big business, you're not backed by whatever. So my wife has seen me at my my lowest points mm -hmm. and financially, mentally, and 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 keep when I lost belief in my story. She yes. kept she kept reminding me of the story in which I said I was to commit to. Okay. So so <laughs> so that that that's that's what the support has been finances, emotional, just just keeping because it's so it's so easy to lose your way on this journey uh, mm -hmm. when you're when you're going through your challenges. 
and to have someone support you and and still be there when they see you at your lowest and mm -hmm. and still still cheer for you as, as if you're the winner when you're in the right. losing position that's the person that I, I fully appreciate and 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 show the utmost respect and as joseph stated um when you're at the top or whenever you're in the victory lane uh anyone could be beside you but it's when you're going through the challenges that you'll identify mm -hmm. who's genuinely on your team so, gentlemen it, it it is it is very clear that you are both married to virtuous women yeah. it is very clear and it's true behind every great man is a great woman or a greater woman because she, she that extra strength that she humps into you it, it's it's amazing and i i want to salute uh the wives that you have i'm not sure if they're watching but i want to salute them because it's important we, we the the objective of the now talk show is a safe platform for men and uh, many times, you know, you've seen lots of platform and a good percentage. We women, we have the upper hand. But I think it's important that a man uh, expresses his voice because I believe that when a man speaks, it, it it shapes the world. It shapes the world, and we need more of more shaping. So the woman backing behind you, which is your wife, um, you guys are good, just going to continue on this path of just absolute greatness so congratulations to you both Thank you. wow so now you guys both had pivotal moments of trauma at a younger age so this book i know young men will be reading it what do you want them to take away what is the takeaway to the young audience because you guys are, are relatively young yourself so what is the takeaway well, you know, when I was writing this book, I just thought, what would I have told myself knowing what I know now in retrospect when I was making that jump from elementary school to high school and trying to figure out who I was, what my identity was. And I think that what I want people to take from this book is that, first of all, you know, you have to define yourself on your own terms, not by what other people expect of you not by what society expects of you but on your own terms because it's the least restrictive way to live and once you get to that level you can achieve so much more because you're not being burdened by certain things mm -hmm. uh, i think another overarching thing is you know turn all your losses into lessons because ultimately they are going to come life is not always going to be good you are going to fail you are going to stumble and fall and the mm -hmm. idea that you gotta take something from it. Um, so I think you know those are just two general, very general things. You know, I, I like to think that I can relate to some of the younger people. I had aspirations like anyone else about being a professional athlete, about you know being a rapper or a dancer or whatever the case may be. And if you've been on my Instagram, I still do all that stuff. I was about to say yes. all work and no play. Come on now. <laughs> I did that. Now, the reason I showcase that is a lot of people are like, well, you know, you're a doctor, you're a surgeon, you're supposed to have this degree of decorum and professionalism. But I'm like, that's not relatable to people exactly. who are to me and want to be from the, want to be at that level. I want them to know that they can still make jokes, they can still play video games and you know, watch tunes and and have fun and and dance and just be carefree but at the same time you can reach those goals that you set for yourself um because ultimately um we're all very multifaceted people we're all very people with a lot of uh of gifts and talent and i want people to not, you don't have to get rid of those to, to achieve your dream you can use them as a way to supplement your dream and supplement what you want to do uh so i think those are some general things i hope people take from the book uh, and, uh, and and carry on in their life. So, Dr. Quay, this is your Instagram we're looking at. Tell us, tell us about this. Uh, you know, this collage of pictures. Give us a story behind the importance of these pictures that you've posted. Well, uh, you'll see pictures of my son uh, and his shenanigans. You'll see pictures of my my wife and my kids. You'll see pictures of me at work. 
You'll see skits where I'm just making jokes. You'll see some videos of me dancing. Uh, you'll see some videos where I'm referencing some of my heroes, uh, referencing some of my past, recognizing people who have played a role in my life. So I think it gives a little bit of a, a insight into my experience. Of course, the book is there as well. It gives an insight into all the things I've been up to and all the things that uh, motivate me. So I think people can kind of look at this page and get a pretty accurate picture because I, I give a very a mostly transparent view of kind of what I what I'm like behind the scrubs and behind the surgical mask. And that's important. So you're you're literally showing persons that you're balanced. There there's a harmony to your your life. Not all play uh, or all studies. There's a little bit of everything, which is important. Dr. Uh, Dr. Daniel, I'm telling you, man, I'm telling you, I am telling you, okay? Mr. Daniel, I'm telling you, remember this day. No, for okay? sure, 100 Please answer the question. Um, more or less on what I would like people to get out of the book is, as, as I keep stating, is like, for instance, in school, my, I was I was happy to see a D. I was I was happy to see a D. <laughs> I, I was like, I, I just barely did it, but let's 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 keep this D going. I was happy. So did, did you say a so D or a C? A D, C, any one of those bad boys, I'll accept. <laughs> and and the idea is just, um, the idea is just to know that. And to be aware that when you get marked by society, that does not mean that you're finished. If you That's get right. an F in society, does not mean that you're finished. Mm -hmm. Like, so for instance, I'm getting my D's, I'm getting the pressure of everything else. But one thing that I wanted to convey with the book is that it doesn't necessarily get easier. You just get more confident and you don't want to commit to that loss. So if I keep trying, that means I've not committed to a loss that has occurred. So the idea is to keep trying and don't let your loss, um, you know, you, you respect the loss, but you never commit to them. Mm -hmm. They're not the final say in your existence. Wow. That, that is, that is a, a, a very important statement or an important awakenment that you have showcased that um, person's category should not be your beacon that's no, important no it's a must it's a must um especially it's a now and, and i mean d could be for distinguish c could be for creative <laughs> no, for sure i i know for instance on my in, in regards to me i know that i'm i'm proceeding to my fourth book and many of those teachers that have given me those d's I, i'm unaware if they even started one book <laughs> <laughs> and you know that is so important that is so important just how you have dissected that that is just so important I, I you know this i mean when it comes to the overall uh, overall um academic structure it's really in a box and years later they still haven't changed the box Yet still our environment has changed, our mindset has changed, how how we how we how we look and view things really have changed. I mean, we're in a state of um just being virtual because of what is happening. And yet still the very box that they've created us to learn from. And so so many persons miss it because you just you just don't learn like that. Like I mean, I'm pretty open about my dyslexia that I I challenge learning too, and where I am today only because it's just I changed the narrative how I see the box. So that's absolutely amazing. Wow. Congratulations. You Thank did you. it. So I want to know a little bit more about, I know we just had your Instagram, um, you know, was up and you were talking about it, but why would you, why do you post those pictures? Tell us a bit about the public information on your Instagram that you have posted. What does that mean to you? Um, one of my concerns is, um, one of my, it's, it's like a heart, it's, it's connected deeply in my heart. That's why I'm so 
thankful for Jeff for giving me this platform. And mm -hmm. one thing I'm aware of is the power of storytelling. Yes. Because that's what determines how someone treats you. That's what yes. determines your belief. That's what determines so much that. And the, the thing that hurts my heart is in our community, it's storytelling is not taken. Too many other people are telling our stories. Mm -hmm. So we it, we need to to combat that. I have to tell my own story. I can't mm -hmm. I can't leave my story in the hands of someone else. Your history. So, that's right. Yes, I, I cannot afford that by no circumstance. So that's mm -hmm. why I share my quotes. That's why I share everything just to say, listen, I'm like this is oh this is my version. Hopefully it helps you. I'm doing it to help you. I'm doing it to help myself. But mm -hmm. take a look at this version before you get fooled by another person's version. Wow, that is important. Uh, that is absolutely important. Um, Dr. Akwey, mm -hmm. you've answered this question, but I'm going to ask you to really <clears throat> personalize this question. What would you tell your younger self where you are today? Like the personal message, awakenment, story. Um, when you got caught in trouble, when your mom separated you from your friends, what would you tell your younger self compared to where you are right now? Uh, yeah, so, you know, I think that, you know, first of all, I, I tell myself that it's going to be fine. You know, I think that uh, when you're younger, you have a very insular view of, of life, you know, Whatever's happening that day is terrible, and, and you can't get past that. But I think that you know, I'll I'll tell that I'll tell a younger me that it's going to be fine. You know, the confusion you feel, the isolation you feel, these things are temporary, uh, and you're gonna go through phases in life where certain people will come and go. Uh, mm -hmm. and I think I'll tell myself that the failures that you do experience just see what you can learn from them because they're going to set you up for the eventual success. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, I'd probably say uh, enjoy the people you meet, enjoy the time you have, you know, continue to work hard, but make sure that you, you, you achieve that balance, you know, keep up your athletics, keep up your, your relationship with people because, you know, I, I think that's one thing that we do take for granted. Um, mm -hmm. at every phase in our life, uh, the, the connections we make with people. A lot of my friends in high school are no longer here, and you always a bit of regret when you say, oh, you know, I could have had one more moment with that person, not one more time that we could have, could have spent together. So I think those are some general yeah. things that told my younger self. So you, you got a scholarship, a sport. What 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 uh what what area of, of uh sports were you doing at the time? Yeah, I ran track and field. Uh, I ran the four hundred meter and mm -hmm. the eight hundred meter and the six hundred meter indoor. So I was a middle distance specialist. And mm -hmm. uh, at the time I graduated high school, I held the school record for the four hundred meter run. And, okay. Uh, and uh, I carried that into university. Unfortunately, after my second year, um, after a family business was kind of struggling, I had to drop out of sports so I could work. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I think, it, you know, I may have not reached some professional level, but definitely taught me the discipline uh, and the focus that gets me through some of the days in surgery, for example, which are much harder than any race that I run. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you always know you wanted to be a doctor? No, no. Uh, when I went into university, I thought I was going to be a physiotherapist or a gym teacher, and then I thought I was going to be a pharmacist. And then after I took chemistry my first year of university, you could cross out the pharmacy part. <laughs> I said, okay, well, I'm going to find something else I'm going to do. And medicine just became, uh, it just kind of became something that came to the forefront. I think it was just kind of seeing mentors. I worked mm -hmm. as a medical assistant and you know, I would do all the work and the doctor would come in there and sign the chart. And I said, you know what I want to do? I want to be a doctor. <laughs> I don't know about this, this guy. I feel like I'm getting treated right now. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I wasn't on that trajectory. So after I graduated university, I took two more years. Mm -hmm. um, I did what I needed to do to get the courses. 
and uh, I ended up applying to the U.S. because med school can be very challenging in Canada, yeah. especially for people of color. But they've actually taken a lot more proactive steps to recruit people of color, which is very nice to see. It's something mm -hmm. I wish I could have benefited from, but at least yeah. I think uh, myself and other people helped lay some of the groundwork for that to happen. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, and even when I went to med school, I said the last thing I want to be is a surgeon. So I don't want to be standing up all day. I don't like blood. I don't like cutting into people. And it just shows you that you can say whatever you want, you can say whatever you want, but life has a way of, of, of pushing you on a direction you don't anticipate. And, right. You know, I love surgery. I love what I do. And I love mm -hmm. the opportunities to, to save lives. Uh, mm -hmm. kind of settings where once I said I'll 100% not do this and here I am. Right. Well, again, your destiny is your destiny. Mr. <laughs> Daniel, you're an entrepreneur. Why yes. that route? Why not um, that working for someone, under someone? I mean, you are, as you said, you're an author. You actually assist persons to get on the amazon bestseller list like you know you, you're like a shepherd you're just you're just helping everyone getting to where they need to be why that route um um i've been doing it from all my life like everyone knows that i've always cheered people on it's something that 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 makes sense to me and to if i was to tell my younger self uh, the, a few things it would be um one of my quotes is that pride is not a good listener. So take some time and listen to people. Um, mm -hmm. When I was younger, I thought I was the smartest person. Although I got these, but I didn't mean I thought I was dumb. D I, for I distinct. It depends on what the D represent. <laughs> Correct. So <laughs> I, I wasn't, I wasn't listening to information coming into me mm -hmm. because I thought mm -hmm. I was a smart person, overly smart in topics that were not, I should have listened a little more. So I would tell the uh, younger version, take your time and listen and don't believe mm -hmm. that you know all of the answers. You have not taken the journey yet. You could listen and, and stay away from comparisons. Um, mm -hmm. you, you have to be very careful that you do not get into comparing yourself with another person. This, right. is very, this could be detrimental and this could steal your who you are which you could mm -hmm. never get get back. So you have to be very careful. Just a quick story. I was selling vehicles. Me and my friend were running a dealership. I sold a mm -hmm. Bentley at Finch and Weston Road. I don't think anyone sold a Bentley at Finch and Weston Road. We sold okay. a Bentley and more or less, you know, it was, it was just not the area for it. But because mm -hmm. I was so into the storyline, I, I was pushing it, me and my friend, we, we did it. And then the year after I wrote my book and Instead of selling Bentleys, I, I was now selling ten dollar books. Wow! And so people were people were like, "Jay, um, I heard you're selling books now, <laughs> right?" So, <laughs> but <laughs> but what I was I was sticking to what was true to me that I didn't I don't want to impress the world and give myself up. So All I right. would tell anyone, whatever you are, just stick to that course because that course is what makes me feel whole. That course is what makes me have something more than a duplicate of someone else. So yeah, just stick to your, whatever is natural to you, you would stick to that and you would stick to it die hard, no matter mm -hmm. what is told to you, no matter what is said about you, because that's where your true power is in finding yourself. Wow. Again, and you're, you're about to release another book, right? That's not a question. Not a no, no. That's not a question. That's not a question. <laughs> My doctor Delaney. That's, <laughs> That's a statement. That's a statement. Uh, so yes. congratulations on the follow-up book. Uh, would you guys be willing to collaborate with ten women? We we'll left oh. ask Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> I think that will be a great liaison <laughs> collaboration. <laughs> 10 men, 10 women, 10 different chapter, the book of 20, 20 minds. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I think that will be great. I absolutely love, love, love the concept. 
And I can't wait to meet the mastermind behind this book. Ladies and gentlemen, we have just come down to the end of our show again. I am your host, Dr. Nadine Wong. I am so excited. And I want to tell you, we're going to have an excellent show. All this meat and potatoes with the doctor and the entrepreneur, the authors. I mean, gentlemen, you have represented so well. Congratulations to you, your family, and to this vision. And I'm so glad that you accepted the Now Talk Show invitation to showcase your part on uh, your, your part in this book. Again, thank you so very much for joining us. I want to take this opportunity to share that the Now Talk Show is sponsored by the Alabaster Wellness Clinic, where we specialize in clinical counseling, integrative okay. medicine, and trichology. We also take this opportunity. This has been a very important month for men. We've heard of Mother's Day, Father's Day, but the month of November is International Men's Month, particularly on the, the, the 19th. So to all the men, all the distinguished gentlemen, past, present, and to come, again, happy, happy, happy International Men's Day. And again, I'll use this opportunity, should you know of another distinguished gentleman who has a story, who has a story, in terms of trials, how you have overcome into your triumph, and where you are in the now. The Now Talk Show, we are extending a virtual invitation to you to join us on the Now Talk Show. Gentlemen, is there any final word that you would like to share before we go? Well, I just thank want you to for having me for the opportunity uh, to be on the show. Thank you for inviting us and promoting the book. I think it's a very important uh, You can uh, hold it. And, uh, a very important um, uh, mission because ultimately, you know, the implications of the book are not just to share lessons, but ultimately to save lives, to break generational curses, to set people up for future success, and to open up a new narrative for black men in Toronto and black teens and black kids in Toronto, you know, mm -hmm. because we struggle with that narrative. We see the news, we hear what's happening, and we're just trying to do what we can in mm -hmm. our own way to combat that. So that's all, that's what I have. I thank everybody for support, and I remind everybody to continue to support. Right, that's amazing. Uh, Mr. Daniel, did you want to add anything or? Did you want to echo what Dr. Just, Clay said? I agree with him, and and it's we, again I, I appreciate you getting us on the show and, and giving oh. us such a great platform and letting us speak freely. I, this yes, was beautiful. I appreciate it. Yes. Well, again, we salute you. We honor you. I'll say it again. When a man speaks, he has the ability to shape the world. So on behalf of the Now Talk Show, thank you so very much for coming on, expressing to express yourself. And I'm sure your book will shape the next generation and of course, awaken the now generation. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for giving us your time. You've heard me say your time is the most important thing that you can offer to anyone. And on behalf of the Now Talk Show, we thank you for giving us your time. Have a good evening and good morning, depending on where you are. We'll say goodbye.